conditioning. Let's look into this. We're going to go through a bit of core training. I'm going to give you guys um, a little bit on rolling. We're going to go through some rolling. So everyone's going to have a roll. We're going to warm up. We're going to go through our normal program that we would with a client today. And we're going to basically follow that through to flexibility, mobility. We're going to look at functional movement screening. We're going to look at dynamic warm ups. We're then going to go through a strengthening conditioning discussion. And if we have time, we're going to review our Olympic lifting practical, look into exercise progressions and advancing mobility correctly. Whatever we don't do today, we're doing a month time today. Okay, which is the 3rd of June, the first Wednesday is our next training day. That will be at Allgate Fitness Life Studios. Okay, so we'll be doing it up there. Whatever we don't do today, the questions, the stuff we get stuck on, the stuff that you guys want more of, please let me know. I'm going to put a lot more together for that for next time. Okay, so we're going to make way over a two day session today through this. So ask yourself today, this is the goal that I have for you. What can I learn today to make me a better strength coach? Not personal trainer, but strength coach. To start using that terminology with your clients in the gym. For example, Viva, we have a need in our club at the moment for what do you think? What are we talking about when we think about potential bottlenecks and problems at Viva? Who are the clients that you think I'm talking about there? Yeah. So we're going to start using this terminology. We're really going to target this today to our need in our club. Okay, the strength guys. Do you guys have the same issue? Okay. Yeah. So the beef cakes that don't come from group fitness, that don't do PT, are the ones that are more likely to go up to the room up the road that looks like this and they pay 10 bucks a week and get a swap card for because no one's working with them. So we want to find a way, and this is just, I think this is a real way in, is being the expert in strength. Get good at that for those guys because it's not going to hurt them. Don't get me wrong. We're great with women. We're great with women. Our program is really good with females. We just don't have the same amount of women we're way out. It's like 25% of your clients you'll find in your club are men, maybe even less. Okay, for us it's about 20%. The rest are all female. We're good with women. Our programming, our conversations with women, it's very soft. Women generally, okay, refer to that, that they work well with it. It's very much a coaching process, focus on the mind. For the guys, it needs a little bit more grunt. That's where strength coaching comes in. The guys don't like to be asked as much, they like to be told. They don't like to be, you know, um, could you see yourself continuing? Yeah, well, maybe. Guys are like, I don't know, show me. And if you don't look the part, and if you can't show them how to do this exercise, and if you can't teach them, you're not going to get their respect. Guys are like that. Show me, I'm logical. Do you look the part? Can you do it? Can I learn it from you? Cool. Are you in the gym? Training? Do you look the part? Do you do it? Do I like what I see? Cool. I'm going to train with that guy. Okay? That's my firm, solid belief. Simple as that. If you were to ask me, why, um, why do good personal trainers, I've said it many times, why, what makes a good personal trainer? Certainly in, in a club that's not a, an employee model, but a contractor, a good contractor in a club is simply this, the guy that's always there, because he's seen. So if you're in a contractor, which you're not, but if you were, this is the golden rule you get told from that the fitness director's there. Be there. Look the part. Doesn't matter, you train. You have to look the part. What they mean by looking the part is whatever the client tells you going after, make sure you look the part. Fair enough, if you're a bodybuilder, you better look like a bodybuilder. For example, okay? Majority of time. I don't agree with it wholeheartedly, right? But and there's always grey and white, you know, black, white, and grey. Okay, but let's just think about that. Look the part. Okay? Be there. Okay? Give. Continually give. So don't just be on the floor prospecting people. Give them a couple of minutes. Give them an exercise. Work out with them. Join in with them. Give them support. Be the expert. Fair enough? When you're the expert, people want to listen. Cool? I can't tell you how important that is. I personally know that firsthand. I'm frequently always asked, Dion, can I train with you? Dion, can I train with you? So I'll explain a, a, a story a, 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 about that over the last four weeks. The week before I went off, so what's that, two weeks ago, I had Jones, what was that, 14, 15, I think he was born. Um, no, something like that, I better remember, it's just been a blur. Um, 15? All right, yeah. <laughs> 14th was a 40th, 13th, so 12th was a Friday, right? That week, on the 12th, the week from the 5th to the 12th, on the 5th, I said to myself, trainers didn't know this, you know what, this week I'm going to find some clients. 
trainers at our club had been finding me clients up until that. I said, right, I need to see this with my own eyes. What's going on? For the last couple of weeks, it really just slowed down. Things were quite slow on the floor. So I went into the gym a couple of sessions during the week, did my own workout, started speaking to people, just started having conversations where I was going to be a little more open about myself doing training. Fair enough? In one week, I have eight clients in one week. Okay? Now, I'm not saying that to say, oh, you know, I've got eight clients, a big deal. I didn't put any big effort into it besides having those conversations, eight clients in one week. Without making a massive effort, without putting hours in, I put probably two hours in that week I worked out. I spoke to the guys on my group training, I called a couple of clients I haven't seen for a little while, and I got into the gym twice. And when I got into the gym twice, I had these conversations about strength coaching, and I started speaking to people about mobility, because the guys in the gym that weren't getting results are the ones I want to target. How long have you training? Getting the results you're after? Show me what you're doing. Okay, no, no, that's not right for you. No, no, let me show you how to do this, this, and this. Oh yeah, look, I think, uh, I think it's probably time because I get this back problem. How many of the young guys in the gym complain about their back? It's ridiculous. You shouldn't have a back problem, mate. Oh, you're right, mate. You shouldn't. What you're doing is wrong. Do you have those conversations with the guys in the gym? I'm confident about that. I'm telling you, you, don't do that. That's wrong for you. Okay? That's not what you should be doing. You're going to hurt yourself. But you can choose to do that, or if you like, what I'm happy to do for you is at the moment, we've got to buy two, get one free session. I personally will take that off for you guys because you've been here for three years and I would like to see you guys get better. And as a whole, I know there's three or four of you guys that will do it. Who else would like to do a session with us to come up with a program that you train with? Oh yeah, there's Steph, there's Adrian and there's Nick. Cool. Three people from one conversation. Brilliant. This week, been back, three more people. Just, just asking Dion or that group, can I train with you? Dion, I've done this, can I train with you? Why is it people want to train with me? What am I doing that the other guys aren't doing? Knowledge, talking perhaps, I don't know. Whatever it is, knowledge, talking, setting by example, having the balls to go and speak to the guys and tell them what needs to be done. It's not rocket science. You guys can all do this. Okay, I'm just making a point of it. You can all do it. Okay? It's whether you want to do it. Alright? It's whether you're worried about them telling you no, no, until then no. No, I'm too busy. I tell them no. It's my, and my, you know, I've got my time available. It's at, at, at my uh, uh, availability. At the end of the day, they'll listen. If they want to get results, then I can show them how to do it. It's not arrogant. I believe in what I can do. Period. With the guys, you need to do that a bit more. Okay? It's a little bit different approach to when we discuss our sales process. It, it's the same one, but it's just a little bit more direct. Yeah? And it's very much focused on the technique and the education of the opponent. When we talk about mentoring a conversation with these guys, it's not motivation, not women, it's not nutrition, it's about training and results. It's about being in the gym more often with quality workouts rather than giving crap in the workout because you're injured. Let me show you how to work safe and effectively and get results. Give it a go. Cool. So at the moment we've got to buy two, get one free promo. It's a piece of cake. Really, really simple to be able to do that. One of the ladies was, and this is a really interesting um, lady, it was Friday, that the 5th, the, the 12th, sorry. It's off 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, I'd been training all day. It was the day that I met with you twice. Yeah. Uh, I met with twice, then had some other training after lunch, blah, blah, blah. And a lady came into the gym, I hadn't seen her for all. She actually came to a strength presentation about 12 months before that, or somewhere around about what, like that. She, anyway, she comes into the gym and, hey, how are you going, Helen? Remember my name? Hey, I haven't seen you for a while. Tell me how's the training going. Oh, don't go into the gym. You know, I don't worry. Dion's asking me about training. Fair enough. Oh, he's going to ask me. He's going to tell me to do. Which is very much a response you should expect. Because these people aren't doing strength training. So they want to do their own thing because they don't know. And they don't want to fail. So they fear failure. Fair enough. So they don't want to be asked. They don't want to be put on the spot. And you're a pushy trainer. Guys, do you know? You're a pushy trainer. Is their perspective? Yeah. Look at Biggest Loser. Right, let me ask you this. Our clients don't read into it any more than what they see on TV. Do they? They don't read into the fact that... What's the big guy's name? Give me a name for Biggest Loser. Shannon. Shannon, the big guy? Okay. The, the, That's the client. Okay, no, no, sorry, sorry, the, 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 the clients at the moment. Big Kev. Big Kev, Big Kev, right? They don't know that people like Big Kev are down here as a human being at the moment. They don't know that. They don't know that Big Kev has made a decision 
probably put his life on hold. He's probably had to go and borrow thousands of dollars to pay his mortgage and so forth to go in and do this at that time. Is that what it is? I don't know. Show, I'm show you. They, cool, they, cool, they, cool. They pay you any mortgage payments. And they expect a result. Yeah. So, so I didn't know that. Okay. But let's let's go away from that. That's good. No, you're right. I didn't know that. But just think about what what are their motivators to do a good result, to get a result? They've been picked. I thought that was one. So let's get rid of that one. <laughs> They've been picked. That they're on the on the show. So straight away they got the stigma on. Better do well because this guy won last year and it's a well-known program. And you know they've got all this motivation behind them to make sure they do a good job. I've made a decision to put myself out there. I'm down here, and now I just let a whole of Australia see me exposed. Pretty good, bigger. Could you imagine that, Jess, a few years back? They get them to weigh in. These guys have commitment, yeah? They're determined to get this. This has got to go. So they can push a lot harder than you or I can with majority of people. They can go into that group and smash them and speak to them and tell them and bust their chops like they are. They're hammering them, okay? And that gives us a bad rap. It gives us a bad rap because it doesn't show all the effort we have. We don't treat people like that. We don't treat people like that, and most of the time we can't. We've got to earn that. And you will treat people like that now. But you didn't on day one, did you? Or day two, maybe it took you three months, some of you might take you six months, some of you might never have happened and it doesn't need to happen for that point. But people simply think that's how you get treated from day one. So understand that. It doesn't matter what you say, it's what you show them that they'll remember. So it doesn't matter how you go and speak to them in the session. It doesn't matter about how you prospect on the floor and how you go and have a chat and I can show you this and I can show you that. You haven't shown me nothing yet because that's how I think you're going to treat me. So you have to get them face to face in a consultation for you to be able to deliver what you can actually show them. That's the big thing that's come back to me over the last month. Of these eight people, three of them, yeah, 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 they had this, yeah, yeah, oh, no, no, no. And I had to physically say, you're coming with me. Because they didn't know. One of them said, mate, you don't actually know what we're going to go through. I'm going to tell you straight out, John, this is going to be the best thing you've done in the last two years since you've seen those five doctors. You're coming with me. Okay? Didn't give him an option. Okay? Took him through the session. He rang me up the next day and said, Dion, thank you very much. Thank you so much. I can't believe how much I got out of that one half an hour compared to the last two years with my five doctors telling me that I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't do this. What do you think I started telling me? What he could do. They gave him something because he wanted to do that. His whole set for the first five minutes, oh yeah, I can't do that. Oh yeah, I could have been there for two hours talking about it. I said, mate, John, please just let me do my session and I'll explain at the end of the session what I want you to do and what you cannot do. Okay? But until then, otherwise you should have stopped and start, mate. Okay, okay, okay. At the end, worked out because I'm on his shoulder. What happened? Oh, oh, well, how'd you know that? Oh, how'd you know this? Oh wow. Oh good, the doctor said the same thing. Couldn't couldn't believe it. Because you didn't know any different. So, what's the point of the, the story? You've got to get in there and show them. You've got to go and do this with some people. Okay? Certainly the guys, they respect what you need more example. Okay? That's for the way you talk, the way you train, and the way you teach. Can they respond to that? Okay? If not, you're going to struggle. So the more sessions on me, the more times you can do that, the better. That was one person. I had to pull him across. The second person was... And, and I'm explaining this now because my intro is really on, on what you need to do to be able to do this stuff. Was that Helen, the Helen lady, the Friday afternoon, you know, a bit shy. I said, Helen, can you just show me what you're doing in the gym? I had to leave. I had to be somewhere at four o'clock. And I thought, nah, that's not the attitude because you're going to rush this and this lady needs your help. So forget that. Forget what needs to be done. Good. Four o'clock, come join in, guys. Forget that, I'm going to spend some time with this lady. Can you show me what you're doing? Right, came in, I said, right, I, I really, from a personal training point of view, I, I use this all the time, guys, it's absolutely gold. From a personal training point of view, you can just sit wherever you guys would like, just make sure you're in it. <laughs> Good 
to see your walking style. It's awesome, man. Fantastic. Good. Round of applause. She's up on her feet. Right? Take this picture for four months. Fantastic. After a, a busted leg, boss. That must be great, Stacey. Well done. Um, now, uh, where was I? I asked her to, to show me what she was doing. Went through a little bit of what she's doing, and I said to her this, as a personal trainer, as a business owner, I'm really happy that you're here in the car today. For me, great. What that means to me is I've got more attendance, I've got you here, means you're engaged in our club. That's a good thing, but as a personal trainer, I don't want you doing what you just did. So I'm, I'm, I'm stuck here at the moment. What, what should we be doing? All right, I'm being quite honest. She goes, oh, well, what do you mean? I go, what you just did there, not right for your body health. Okay, absolutely detrimental to your back and the back problem that you've had in the past, I'm not comfortable with you doing that, so I need you to stop that. So what I'd like to do is give you some exercises that are going to be right for you to get you mobile. Because at the moment, just look at yourself in the mirror. Okay? Everyone stand up. This is what I've got to do. Really simple. So just look at yourself in the mirror. Now I want you guys to pretending you're looking in the mirror. Okay, actually turn. Turn. Yes. Yes. Look in the mirror. Hey, how good's that? I said just look in the mirror for me. Hands to your side. Okay, let's work with Luke today. Okay, let's go, let's go. I said, look at yourself in the mirror. Now just imagine, just imagine, I'll, I want you to think that you're doing this with someone. Actually, punt run. Punt run, punt run, punt run. Why don't you guys touch one and touch somebody else? Okay, everybody right, get your hands off. Okay, so I'll let it go. Okay, I'm touching him, you're not touching him. Okay, right. I said, now just look at yourself in the mirror. Here she was. So everybody, let's go forward neck, everybody. So let's get the punt and go forward neck. Okay, chin up, forward neck. So this is what I'm after. Let's go protracted shoulders. Okay, so she was really round through her feet fine, and there was so much of a compensation that she was in this position and her survival extensors were rock solid. I'm talking, she had muscles, she had hypertrophy through those survival extensors. She could touch and they were dense. There was muscle there. Because she's 63 years of age, and that's the way it's been for so long. She was here. So there was quite a lot of density there. So I just said, look, what I'd like you to do is just relax. Let your body drop. Guys, instructor client, so listening to me, thank you for that. It's very great. Okay. Just, just let your body drop. Now all I want you to do is very gently, I just want you to draw your navel in and come up on your tiptoes for me. So stand nice and tall. Now can you feel yourself lengthen out from your hips now? So hold this position, feel yourself lengthen out from your hips down. Now I'm going to hold that, come back down to your heels for me. Stay there, don't move. Now all I want you to do is just imagine you're going to bring your head back and just imagine you're bringing your chin in and under and now try to lengthen out the back of your spine. So let's see you lengthen out from this part, the back of your, of your head, spine to the ceiling. In this position, okay? So holding this, okay, tummy's on. Now all I want you to do is a big roll of your shoulders. Up, back, and down with your shoulders back. Now I'm staying in that position. Let's see you come up onto your tiptoes. Really feel yourself lengthening. Feeling that a bit more? Good. Stand down onto the heels. Now don't you dare move. I said, now hello, you look in the mirror. I said, when was the last time you've seen your hips? She smiled. She goes, what, what, what do you mean? I said, look, look at your hips. Can you see this? I can see your waist. She goes, oh, you're right. I said, you know, all we did there was focus on the way you hold yourself. Do you look a little bit sexier in that position? Okay, she goes, oh, I don't, no, I don't see myself. No, honestly, as a female, is that a sexier position to be in than where you were before? Just drop, let your body go, is that sexy, Helen? No, no, it's not, Dion. Then go back to where you were. I want you to hold yourself sexier and stronger. Oh, she looked, she was like, okay? Because she had thought something so simple, her posture was, Making her feel down. And we've done this exercise. We've done it before. Down. Now be really happy. Up. Now be really sad. Same thing. Do you feel more energy when you're standing up on the balls of your feet? With your navel in, with your chest up? Yeah, I do. Okay. Is that what personal training is about? For you, Helen, that's what personal training is about. Oh, okay. Now hit the floor. And we went, went through marching, went through some bridging, and so forth. And the way we went, crap, I need to do this. I had no idea <coughs> that's what personal training was about. Because often you need to those machines, and they scare me. Uh, I said, Helen, there will be times we'll have you on those. It all depends. But right now it's about finding what you can do for your body. Because I want to see your posture improve based on your trip to Nepal in October. She's a, um, 
and she's a hobby enthusiast walker. She walks mountains, she's done Kilimanjaro, she's done all of this. So think about the neck. What does she hold on the back? Okay? So we, I said to her, look, if that's the case, and she's done her ankle and I found that out, I went through my posture, what's going on here? Have you had a neck injury? Oh yeah, I rolled that last year. Okay, what about this other knee? Oh yeah, I've had a problem with that two years ago. How did you know that? Because your body's telling me. Now, if you guys don't know that stuff, if, if you struggle with that, I'm, I really would like to see you guys work on that. And it's not hard to pick it up. You know, what, what's going on here? Why is that happening? Okay? By picking up these problems, you can ask those questions and see what's going on. She's got a really tight right hip. Tight right hip, all gunked up, no mobility in the hip. What do you think's going to happen? Oh, the wall. That's why your knee's sore. That hip's just bound up. You've got no movement. Therefore, your knee's taking the brunt of it. Okay? Oh, okay. So what do I do there? What do I do there? Every time I go to something, what do I do there? What do I do there? So as she did that, I'm writing out all the things that could possibly help her with. To, pop, to test clothes, for example. All the things that I can help her with. And that's when I started going through. So if I can help you with that, is that something you want to do? We'll do that in session number two, yeah? On session three, I think you should progress to this. At the end of it, okay, we're going to start. Simple. Now that took me 45 minutes to do that session. I just said, right, away I go. I'm going to go and do this with this person. Forget my four o'clock appointment. She's here right now. Everything else can wait. Because my attitude that week was, I'm going to go and hit the floor and see clients. That was all the difference was. Normally, I would have booked the room with someone at the desk. I'm not sure what would have happened. I'm not sure. I'm not saying that. I don't know. But personally, I can't say what would have happened because I don't know. I did it right then and there. I strike all the arms hot. She's now client. Easy. Because you put the energy in and focus on what your clients want. So guys, I want you to play with posture. Can't run with your client and I want you to fix their posture. And I want you to say it like you believe it, okay? So partner up everybody and let them stand down. I want you to just have a bit of a play with them and just poke, touch. Oh, you're a lucky man, you get to play with Stacey. Good. Poke, touch. And just look at how they're holding themselves, please. Yeah. It's like I'm moved. Could you just yeah, yeah. Could yeah. You do that? yeah, yeah. Thank fine. you. That's great because Jamie's not here and he's normally my camera. Yeah, no worries. So, so you're just going to leave it on the whole time.
So guys, we'll just we'll just we'll just leave it at that. Whatever you did, whatever you did, this is not a posture analysis. We're not. It's good that you guys are starting to do this. It's not a posture analysis. This is an on the floor posture check. The difference, okay? Become experts at it. When you've got a client, when you've got somebody that's moving, for example, the client that I was working with, just facing the mirror, that's awesome. Just, just picking you because um, you guys did great. What I'm going to ask this client when I work with them is, you know, they want to improve their posture. I want to get bigger in the chest. Okay, just stand still. Just stand still. I just want to point out a few things to you and just see if this makes any difference to the way you see yourself in the mirror. That would be the way I would word that. Pretty simple. Okay? Or are you happy with the way you look for that female that's not? Good. I want them to make them feel down here a little bit for the moment. And I'm going to show them how I can make them feel better. It's being very upfront and personal. It's not a posture analysis, it's a brief look statically as to what I could do for this person. And it's giving them, it's demonstrating your ability to say what I need to do for this person. Does everyone get that? Okay? It works really, really well. So, Tice, what I want to see you do, mate, is can you see here? I'm, I'm going to bring him down. Okay? Right well, now, I can help you on, but I'm going to bring him down for a reason because he's got to realise I'm not where I thought I was. People need to know that. I, I don't like that feeling. So how do I fix it? Fair enough? When you feel like this, the next question is, well, help me, help me. How do I get out of that? Great. Okay? So in this circumstance, Tyson, can you see how your shoulders are around in this position? Okay? So we can definitely see that. And the way we look at that, mate, is you can see your hands, they're eternally rotated here. They should be in a neutral position. But never mind. That's where we're at the moment. And at the moment, you're telling me, hypothetically, that you want a bigger chest. So tell me a strategy to build that. I'm training chest twice a week. Right. How often are you training back? I don't do much back. You know, I do, you know, once a week, I whack in a couple of rows. Right, I go. This is what you'll hear from most of you disco bodybuilders at the gym. Okay? And from the ladies, the last thing you want to be giving the office worker is RPM, bicep curls, okay? Or anything in this position, because they're in this position already. They've got to earn that. They've got to do corrective strategies around that. Curling, biking, crunches, the three biggest no-known movements that possibly you could do for somebody like Tyson especially. That, these shots, no one. Okay, not the idea. So, and, and that's right for Tyson too. So mate, what I want you to do is just look at this chest. Now let me ask you a question. If you keep compounding this chest, what you're essentially doing is, is shortening it. What I want you guys to do is look at how I'm using my hands getting hands on, how, how finding the hot spots for your clients and pressing those buttons. Don't avoid them, go straight to them. Fair enough? Okay? If you keep tightening your chest, this is what's happening. You've got to keep pulling it forward. Is that the look that you're after? No. Okay? But you, what you're doing, and what you're telling me is that I'm going to keep training chest until it gets bigger. Can you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay? It doesn't make sense, does it? No. So what we need to do in your case, mate, is we want to elevate. So I want you to roll your shoulders up, Back and down, chest up, now hold that position. I want you to staunch up through your back, now don't you move. Hold that, come up onto your tiptoes. I want you for your abdominals work. Straighten your arms to your side, that's it, just to your side. That's it, just slightly turn your thumb out for me. That's it, good. Tummy in, good. Now lengthen out your spine, that's it. Tummy on, gently coming down, holding that position. Just try to stay there, just relax it off a little bit, good. Now in this position, how do you see yourself in the mirror compared to where you were? Much better. You feel better? Okay. It feels a bit awkward. Yeah. What do people say now? What am I doing with my hands? Toss, I'll take my hands off of you. If you take them off. Have I taken no, my no, hands no. off you? What's the rule of thumb to massage? You're always in the hand. Why is that? They need me to be there. Cool. So, keep your body upright, chest up, tummy's on. Now, do you see yourself aesthetically with a little bit more of an improved posture to where you just were? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so what we're going to do, mate, and this is how I want to get started with you. I didn't know that all the training is what he's thinking. This is how I want to get started, is we need to work a little bit on your abdominals. We're going to have to start lengthening your chest. Training twice a week is not going to help us for your chest, mate. We're going to start lengthening this out so that you can improve this posture and you've got some work to do 
through these muscles here to hold that position, as well as through this muscle here. I want to show you how to work that. Okay, so I'm going to do an exercise. Firstly, that feels good, yeah? Yeah. And that's the sort of thing that you're going to be after over the next 12 months to improve your training and your technique? Yeah. Good. Just hit the floor for me. I'm going to show you an exercise I want you to take away. Down to your elbows. This exercise here is going to get you working on that staunch muscle that I was talking about. So elbows under your shoulders directly. Okay? Holding that position. Lift your chest up. Now, great exercise for you, mate, is just set, let your body go, and just lift up. This is what we call a McKenzie's press. This here is a really important exercise for those people that are flexed through their spine because it's cranial extension. Okay? There's a whole book written about it and there's a professor that put this out in the 80s. This was the one technique he used to improve thousands and thousands of backs. Okay? Now with your back problem, this could hurt. Okay? But that's not what we're going to be doing now. Feet together, tummy up. What I want you to do is just pop yourself up onto your toes. Good, hold that position. We're going to do what's known as an elbow push up. I just want you to drop your shoulder blades for me. Hold that and push right away for me and staunch up in here. Can you feel that muscle? Yeah. Okay. Hold that there for five seconds of thereabouts. Now again, it's not five seconds, it's however it takes me to see that you're working that muscle. Yeah. So when you're doing it, listen to your body. Then you go, slowly, and push up in the other hand. Hold that there. Get these muscles engaged. This is what I want you to feel because at the moment when you're holding yourself, these aren't engaging. Yeah. You're too tight here and we're not working these muscles. And stand up for me, mate. Awesome. How's that feel? Yeah, Let's go back to the normal stance in the posture. Let's see if you can roll those shoulders up, back down, and just turn on the chicken wings here. Let's do that. Fantastic. Can you see if we can improve that, mate? Yeah. I, okay. feel, I feel loose and light, as in not forcing it as much. Good. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. And away I'll go into one minute catch up and do some training. So, what did I do? What did I do that you guys could employ? What, what one thing you're going to take out of doing this presentation, the one that I did before with Luke? What, what am I doing? What have you learned from this last few minutes? Just get hands on. Get hands on. What else? It's not rocket science, you've heard it all before. Contact. Eye contact. Eye contact. Cool. Good one. Being confident. Being confident. Okay? Be the best. Be the best coach you possibly can be. Don't speak to them worrying about, oh, will they? Do they? Back yourself. You don't know whether they're going to do that. You don't know. Go on and give it your best. And if they don't like it, that's cool. Next person. Because nine times out of ten, they will turn around and say, okay, yeah, yeah, that's what I need. The guys in the gym, and I say it all the time, the ones in the gym that have plateaued, the ones in the gym that have injured themselves, the ones in the gym that have been doing it so often, they're prime targets. Perfect. They started, I just want to do it myself. I've got a few results, now I've stopped. Bom, bom. Bring them back out of there. Get them out of the ditch. They're the perfect targets for you. Rather than looking at the guys in the gym as they've been doing it themselves for a while, they know what they're doing. Bullshit, they don't know what they're doing. Ask them if you've got results, no? Oh, I think so. Cool. There's very few guys in our gym, and just think about your gym, that do get results. Tan is one of them. Okay, Tan is great. He tries, he practices, you can work with him. And he's always asking me questions in the toilets when I'm going to walk past the deal, what should I do here? He takes it on and he listens. You know, this guy was 75 kilos, just bulking up, he's about this big and he's up to 88 or something, yeah. trying to get to 90 kilos. And all he's done is change his food, done this, done that. He's always changing his plan. He's, you know, a very, one of very few fitness streets. But there's not many other guys in the gym that do that, besides perhaps James is one of them. And apart from that, Forget them. You know, like John's, the old guys that have been there for 10 years, they do their own thing. Every time I work into the gym, I think I'm working out, I see them, oh, I'm going, <laughs> see, as soon as I get that thing on my shoulder, thing on this, thing on that. If I have the attitude of saying to the guys, in the middle of my session, you know, um, you need to do training or, or, or you shouldn't be doing this, oh, it's pretty simple. John, mate, you've been doing this for so long, don't press over your head. <laughs> He's this guy. Are you going to let this guy press over his head? You're complaining about your shoulder, John. Show me, sit down. Can you get 170 degrees in a standard shoulder extension test or T spine extension test? Guys, very simple test you teach your clients. Come on into the bench. Can you get 170? If you cannot get 170, period, you don't press over your head. Nine times out of ten, you don't press out of overhead. Everyone stands your shoulders aside. Okay. Yes, maybe, no, 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 yes. Yes, maybe, no, 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 yes, yes. Not nine times out of ten, about 70%. Just 
just by looking at where your position of your shoulders are. And whether you like it or not, I've got a reason to tell you why I said yes or no for you. Okay? Pretty simple. Get those people doing more rows in their program. Get two sets of horizontal pulling rather than the overhead pressing component. Okay? Because most people need this movement. Very rarely do we do this. We may do this. Okay? So we want this movement, use cables, use therabeds and so forth. Okay? But again, it's got to be from here. So that's a better exercise for that mind. Okay, it's not rocket science, you know this stuff. Just back to self. Be confident. Okay? Cool. So guys, get hands on, try it, get in there, get amongst it, do it. Today, this was the introduction. Today I'm gonna give you a lot more of the skills to have the confidence to go and do this stuff. If you were to be in the gym for three hours, just walk around and cross your check with everybody. I guarantee you will work out with the clients the next day. You will have to walk out with clients the next day. And if you're not, you're doing something wrong, so ask someone, help me. I did it, it didn't work, I didn't get clients. Okay, because so I did it in one week, without trying, eight clients. Just to go and prove it to myself, I need a bit of a pick me up. What are we doing wrong, Viva? I'm going to do it, eight clients, bang. So it's not that, something's going on, I need to do some training with you guys. Fair enough? Okay? Easy. This week, they're going to train me, they're going to train me, they're going to train me. Why? Simple. Be the expert. Get good at it. Practice what you're doing. Be confident. All that stuff. And number one, give. To do all this stuff, you're going to be giving to people. Go and show them. Don't just say, yeah, yeah, you should train me. Don't be that cocky guy. A lot of personal training is, you know, yeah, yeah, I'll do that when you start paying me. Bullshit. Give them your best stuff today, right now. Show them right now. With, so I'll just show you three things then. The shoulder push-up, trying to go to the McKenzie press. All he's doing is knowledge, 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 knowledge. This guy can help me. Good. Knowledge yourself for the guys. With the girls, it might be too much. Okay? But pick your client. For him, for you guys, perfect. For the new girl in the gym that's never done it, way too much. Mm. Way too much. You don't need to impress them. That's silly. We're talking about these guys. That's our focus today. It's taking you guys in the gym, the butts on the out, the ones that aren't getting results, that you've got the excuse they don't want to do PT with. There's no one in the gym that doesn't want to do PT. You just haven't shown them why they need to do PT yet. Cool? Okay. Let's get into it. So, the question, as I said today, to walk away was what can I learn today to make me a better strength coach? So ask yourself this, group training is cost effective and a great way to play, but are you getting results? For $40, here is how you can do that. Now we're going to come up with 40 bucks. $40 a week. For 40 bucks a week, what can you do? Do four monthly? I want to do more. This thing group. What can you do for 40 bucks a week? Do a group. Maybe a couple. I would suggest you get groups together, you train them weekly, and you do a one on one with them a month. So for 40 bucks a week, 39 on 5, you can train on a weekly basis with your coach, get four strength guys together, get four guys in the gym, get them together for a 45 minute session, and then have one session with them a month on their own program and questions. Because we all need that, don't we? You're always going to have someone in the group that's going to be asking a bit more that needs a bit of help. Good. So then you can get them in on a monthly basis as well. It's that easy. With group training, you can get this group together, but you need to spend that hour initial consult with them. Make sense? So right now we've got five group sessions for $99 at the club, or buy two, get one free. So if they spend $198, they're going to get three PTs with you, and they're going to get five group sessions with you. So who are the four or five mates that you want to do your group session with? We've got this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. Great, I'm going to contact them, I'll set up the first session, I'll give you guys, if you all take this up, I'll give you guys the first session on that. Is it worth it to you? Get five people, that's five people for the next five weeks doing a group session plus 15 person training sessions you're getting. Because you're going to get them all to pack up three PTs. There's so many options for them. It's a trial, it's a gateway. Let me show you over the next five weeks what I can do for you as a group. Okay? So you're saying 20 bucks a week, is that? Yeah, I'll well, just threw that together. That's and simple. On top, or? No, that's everything. For us at our club, for us at our club, it is 
uh, we've discounted our rates. So Troy, normally it's um, normally it's thirty four ninety five for our PT. We're going after our gym guys. Yeah. Okay. So right now we've come up with a program for our gym guys. At the moment, if you want to do monthly in our club, it's twenty five ninety five. Monthly training. That's membership and everything. Weekly twenty five ninety five included. So that's sort of the rate that you pay a good life for something like World Fitness First was at that rate. Okay? Now this is the thing. At our club you're $19.95 a week. Or for $25.95 a week, with no contract, just four weeks at a time, you pay one week, two week, three week, four week, get a session. You pay one week, two week, three week, four week, get a session. Okay? Because every fourth week you get your PT session. Okay? Simple as that, no contract, it's just month by month. If you want to stop it, that's cool. Just do your month. If you want to upgrade it, no problems. Okay, excuse me. Now, once you do that, so guys, that's $25.95. Easy. We're making it a real cost effective way for our guys in the gym to now do group training. We're going to start advertising this over the next few months. We're just making it for $25.95 a week. I can help you with this stuff more often, Tyus. I can be the coach. He might say, well, I'm already doing four sessions a week. All I need is some coaching. I need to be shown what to do. So maybe I'll do three or four sessions with you and then I'll go back to monthly. You'll get that. For me, and for the club, we're happy with that because it gets someone into your network and it gets people training in the club. I don't want to see the guys doing the gym. I want to see Viva personally as a big performance centre, which is what we do. I want to see that big push to go the whole club. Group fitness downstairs, group training. That's how I see it. Not people doing their own thing on machines. I'd like to get rid of all their machines, but from a business perspective, that still brings people in. Okay? Once they're in, now let's change their thinking. To do that, we need to train them. Okay, we need you guys to deliver what we believe in, not what they just want to be shown. Fair enough? So what we're doing, mate, is for $29.95, you can do group training. That's a $5 discount. Normally it's $34.95. For $29.95, you can do group training weekly. That cheats that. It's normally $34, as you guys know. This is just for the gym guys we're going after. Did you say minimum five minutes? Oh, that's so enough. That's or? Uh, no, forget that. Uh, he's talking about the direct debit price. We've got a, that's our ongoing, but at the moment we've got a trial, a gateway, which is you can just pay up front if you're not going to do the direct debit. It's five sessions for 99, okay? Or so you can see this big is Well, 29 is very cheap if you work that out. Five sessions for 99 is 20 dollars a session. That's for group training, not one on one. Twenty dollars a session, whereas 29 dollars yeah. that includes your membership. Yeah. It's a, that's very cheap. Yeah. Okay, but it's a gateway. This is a 12 month package. This is a promo we're going to do. Cool. So they can choose 25.95 or 29.95. So simply, if they want to do a group training session, it's 29.95. They want to do a one on one, we just add 10 bucks a week. Make it 39.95. They get a one on one monthly and group training view weekly. Easy. To get them into right now. Five sessions for 99 or three PTs for 99, which is buy two, get one free. These are your gateways, and then once they do that, you sign them over to something like this. We make a package to suit them. Okay? So today I want you to have the skills to be able to do that. With my group, I have a new group of five, this is the stuff today that I'll be doing. I'm just going to teach them for the next six weeks all the basic patterning. In my one on one session, I'm going to give them the inhibitions they need and their specific corrective work that they need, which is why a one on one session is essential before you go into group training. You're my group, okay? Week one, I'll get you in, we're going to do basic functional movement screen, and I'll see you individually to explain what you need to do in your own time. Fair enough? So that's an easy one. I need to work with you specifically about what you need. And most people will say that anyway. Yeah, I can afford that one extra session, and then they realise from one they need a few more. Okay? Any questions about that? I can see people processing this, which is good going, mate. Whoa. Good. Um, any questions? So to, to wrap that up, guys, really simple, easy, and great way to get your existing training group together. Now, what is it you do in that session? Okay, so black belt training sessions. Okay? Is it a knockout? Is it look good new? No, this is team machines. This is getting a group of people together to do resistance training better on a weekly basis. Your program is a push program. So think about push week one, initial console. Week two, you do that with a group. So we go through all the basic patterning. We get people to do that in that session. If you've got enough equipment to do four lots of squats together, great. If you don't, then you're going to have to have people on different stations. 
Okay, and work with them to go through that training. We're going to get you two working together. We're super setting. We're going to go anterior chain, posterior chain. Okay, so we're going to go fit ball rollouts, and we're going to go with the sumo deadlifts. Great, you guys are partnering up and doing that. Over here, we're going to go with anterior chain, posterior chain, and mix that up. Okay, you guys are going to do two sets or three sets, super setting with one another, and swap it over. I'm not worried about compounding. I'm not worried about all that. I'm worried about ingraining patterning and the correct movement to these guys, because they're not doing that. If I did that alone, their training that they do, is going to get better. Because they're going to start applying that when they do the stuff in the gym. Next week I'll start talking to them about their programs. Right now I just want them to move better. Another guy that started with me a week before um, last, uh, like I said, one of the eight that, that joined up that week. John, I saw him last night. I gave him one exercise. I don't know, Tyson, you see me training last night. John, you guys, you've never seen me training before. At six o'clock yeah. last night, I was getting doing deadlifts. I gave him one exercise, he perfected that exercise. His deadlift, I got him to bend. This is a guy that told me all the things he couldn't do. I asked him to bend over. It was shocking. It was one of the work. 30 year old guy just beaten up by doctors, can't do anything, can't move, knees hurt, back hurt, that's the way he looked. No wonder. Okay? He came back yesterday, showed me how you do the bend. Oh, I've been practicing this one, Beyond. Yep, tummy, knee, tip, hip. Are you happy with that, guys? It was bloody perfect. One thing made all the difference. How's your back feeling, my boy? I'm actually feeling a lot better the last couple of weeks. Just from one thing alone. Because now that is what he's trying to do with everything. He's starting to learn that's how I roll. Cool? So put the patterning in into this group training. Has anyone got any questions about that? Easy. These are good options for the guys that know what they're doing, they're in the gym, they're doing their own thing, okay? These are perfect options for those guys because training and mentoring them on a monthly basis, doing group training for $30 a week. This is just for you gym guys, $29.95 a week, do group training, or $39.95, do group training and train with me monthly. If you want to try it, sure. For $198, bucks, we will do five group sessions and three one-on-ones, and then we can work it out from there. 200 bucks, a lot of your guys will say, you know, I'll do that. I'll pay it over the next four weeks, 55 bucks a week, worst case scenario. So there's options for them. Once you show them what I did with you guys before. Cool? Okay. Moving on. So that's where this comes from. Now let's work out how we play with that. Do what you love and the money will come. Most people give up right before the big break. As a trainer and someone that's been in this business for quite some time, I've found that there's a lot of trainers that don't quite understand this. When you do what you love, when you really enjoy what you do, the money will, be, will come. There's a great um, snippet on Facebook that's been going around. Has anyone seen it? I've got a professor that talks about this phenomenon. If you haven't, I'll put it up on the trainer website. One day. Yeah. 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 Right. Excellent. Most people give up right before the big break. Okay, right now for some of you guys, I know some of you here aren't at your potential for PT. I know you guys have a kit where you want to be, where you're comfortable and really enjoying it because you've got that pressure off of you financially, your lifestyle's working in, you've got clients at the same time. I know that. But keep at it. Keep at it. Okay, PT is not one of those jobs that's, you know, going nine to four. It's not that lifestyle. But what you do get is the satisfaction of helping people. You get the satisfaction of, thank you, you've made a difference. You get the satisfaction of doing my own hours, running my own business within a business, getting training, getting good at what you get to do, and working with people to really help them to move forward. But you don't have a nine to five. You might, in, in two, three years, or whenever it happens, you might wait it that way. If you're lucky enough to do that, great. In the beginning, it doesn't work that way. Okay, you sort of put a little bit here and a little bit there. If you're doing that, get them closer together so you get blocks of training. Utilize your time. If you're not running a diary, you're not going to utilize all the time. So if you've got a session from 7 to 8.30 and then you've got an hour and a half break before lunch, you've got to utilize that time. It's not like I don't have anyone there, but that's where I do my workout, that's where I go and speak to my accountant, that's where I do this, I come back in, that's where I take my break, whatever it might be. Utilize your time so you put blocks throughout the day, otherwise it will literally do your head in. So use your diary, and if you're not good at that, get someone to mentor you. Getting good. I think we've explained that this morning already. I'm not going to keep going over that. Just get good at what you, what you do. If you're going to be the strength coach, if you want to go after this clientele, get good at it. Okay? Make sure you're the expert at it. 
How do you do that? Study, learn. Do you stuff to do with it. Study and learn. Who's reading at the moment? Cool. What are we reading? I'm just reading some stuff on uh, rehab specifically around shoulders. Okay, why? Uh, because I have three or four clients in here. Excellent. Well, well done. What are we reading? Um, the use of magnesium as a recovery possible. Quite wow, interesting. Good. Not quite proven just yeah, yet. It's, no. it's, it's not quite, but it will be on that time once they've got enough money to do the studies. Yeah, but great, right, yeah, it's not, not far off. Um, like branch chain of creatine and protein wasn't proven, but we all knew it and then it came out. Yes, it is. So, you know, it, it's there. Um, who else is reading what? Why? I don't know. I don't know. Right. Some, um, someone said, one of my clients said they were really, really, really stiff in just uh, their hands. So it's four there. So just... Bottom line, you link those two together. Yeah. Okay, good. Good. What is your market? What is your niche? Who is it you're going after? Why don't you think about that? Everyone take 30 seconds to think about. In 12 months time, what do I want to say? I'm more of an, I'm an expert here. I'm starting to become an expert there. And don't get me wrong, some of you might think I won't be an expert and I don't agree you can't do that in 12 months. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. But for the last, coming on 15, 15 years for me in August, I've been focusing on being an expert in this area. For you guys, where is it you want to be that expert? So what should you be reading? Who wants to share? Where do you want to be an expert? Sports and powertrain. Sports and powertrain. Okay, cool. Let's start reading and getting onto websites. Start reading T Nation. Start looking into strength, strengthandconditioning.com. Start reading opposite sides of the books. Read movement. If you haven't read movement, read movement. Great book to movement. Great book. Okay. Uh, look into a course perhaps online, Strength and Conditioning with Charles Poliquin. Look at doing his online course. Tudor um, Bonker doesn't have a course, but his <coughs> Resistance Training Progression is a great book to read. Start reading that. If that's what you want, good. Now, of course, I don't know why you want that. I don't know where that's going. You could ask yourself, is that what's going to help me in my career? Okay, is that something that's going to help me with where I'm going? It perhaps could. But if you want to be financially, take that burden off and you want to make sure that you've got a market to do that, and of course, make sure that if it's rehab, because no one does rehab, for example, at Viva, then someone should be bringing up a rehab to do rehab for a Viva. Great, it's a niche. If there's no one doing strength and conditioning and there's a need for it there, then good, go look into that. Okay? But it takes a long time to get good. You've got to keep your focus, you've got to keep going. You know, for the martial artists, you don't get good in a year, you get okay, you get better and better and better and wiser and wiser by practicing years in, years out. Okay? So start reading that. This is the first step to success. Get good. Know what it is you want to get good at and get good at it. Like I said, if you want a safe job, salary, benefits, personal days, holidays, all that sort of stuff, it's not the fitness industry, guys. Certainly not yet. And it's just true. Okay? It's unfortunate. I wish I could say, uh, we're very underpaid as an industry, okay? Hairdressers is the most underpaid, and we're not far behind them. It is a fact. But when you get good at it, you can put your pricing up. We have a structure within push. You can get paid, get up to your $40 an hour, start getting paid a lot better, and start doing your 20, 25 hours and making a better money for 25 hours. Then you get to take your personal days, your holidays, and so forth. You get to work for 48 weeks a year and do 30 hours and then have enough, okay? But you're going to get at it, you're good at PT and managing your diary. Do what you love and the money will come. Early adapters. Early adapters are the successful people. Successful people are, are not innovators or inventors, but they are early adapters. They're not the ones that come out with what's going on. They're not the ones that come out and invent. These are the ones that say, shit, that's good. I better get on and jump on that. I better start doing that stuff now before the guy on the road does. Okay, I'm going to start using that sort of stuff. So when you see something, it's simple. I can't say how many exercises are my favourite because if you ask me this year, it's different to last year and the year before and the year before and the year before. They change, they adapt, they, they evolve. There is, the, it might, when I say that, it might have been last year, I like the back squat well, this year, it's all front squat squats based on what, what I've learned, what I've felt, what I've seen, my experience with clients and so forth. Okay, so we're just changing training. If it's better, simply do it. So 10,000 hours, has anyone heard the rule of 10,000 hours? That's how long it takes for you to get good. Long time, so 10,000 hours or 10 years. Albert Einstein stated it takes you 10,000 hours or 10 years to get good. 
to really be a master. If you've done either of the two, you're told or you're considered a master in your craft. Fair enough. So a master in martial arts has done well over 10,000 hours or 10 years of training, specifically there with the right training. Don't get me wrong. If you do it wrong for 10 years or 10,000 hours, but no mentoring, not ed educated, not learning, not looking at the pros and cons, not looking at the pendulum of corrective exercise versus strength conditioning, where are we going to sit, not looking at both sides. If you just look at this, then you're not going to understand that. So we look at both. I like this for this. I like this for this. Oh, that's good. I like this. Cool. And you start putting it together. Okay? That's how long it takes to get good. Why are people going to let you train them? Why will people let you train them? Do you have the experience? Do you know what they need? Have a good think about this. Don't just say yes. Why would I let you train me? I'm going to let you train me. Why am I going to let you train me? You might think, well, I don't know yet. I haven't seen the way you move, so I can't tell you why. But you'll soon find out. Oh, great. <laughs> Have you got a certificate? I love this. Or a know-how? A deeper understanding of what may work? Or have you just got a certificate, which means, oh, I know how to train? No, a certificate means you know how to take people through the machine to show them how the machine works. And that is describing exercises to individuals, not individuals to exercise. Because that's all you get for the certificate. Cool? This is how you adjust the bench. Oh, this is a chest press. Where's your chest shoulders and triceps? Great. You don't need that. Fair enough. Okay, that's all it gives you. Practical experience. This, training with a trainer, physio, have you worked with a podiatrist? I have. Do you work with a chiro? I have. Many different chiros. Have you worked with different physios? Have you worked with physiologists? All of this is going to add to your learning. All of this will add to you. Okay, but don't underestimate your own personal development. It's huge. Okay? One size fits all mentality and will leave you open to failure. When you think this is the only way to do something, when you think this is it, when you're absolute about something, that can lead you to failure because then there's nothing else. There's no other room. There's no openness to what may be. Okay? You always do this. Think of that terminology and how that would work when you say that to your partner. Okay? Good. It never so absolute. It's got a very negative attitude. Same thing when you think that way about training. This is the only way. That means you completely believe that. Okay? And you don't value anything outside of that. Be careful what you believe in. Perfect the, pro the craft. So perfect your craft. Power and conditioning. Start perfecting that. Start training it. Start learning it. Get a, get a coach. Get a mentor. Somebody that does that. That can teach you more about it. Okay? Because you can learn. But you'll learn a lot faster when you get to bounce ideas back. Okay? So important. So who's the best guys that you can do on that with the team up there? Craig Song, probably they're going to do a bit of work right now, and then hopefully soon you'll be teaching them. Nothing better than a coach or as a, 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 a manager or something like that to have your guys teaching you. Nothing better. Okay? Perfect the craft. People come to me because. Do you guys know what to decide, how to decide what's good and perhaps what's a fad? So can you see what's the difference? What's good? Like I said before, the pendulum. I like this, but like that guy that went on to that Bible course, as I said, put a throttle in front of 30 people and not like Max, Max and I, you know, and there's a few others that they know, you know, just to not listen to that, but there's a lot of other guys there that will be going out, I'll tell you right now, for the next three months and it'll be Viper everywhere. Viper everywhere. Because he told them, I don't try with all of the stuff that I've done for the last 20 years, I just use Viper. It's great. Okay? So how do I use Viper as a tool? How do I use Fitballs as a tool? Okay? How do I use the step as a tool? How do I use TRX as a tool? How do I use the, all of these tools and add them into my ethos, what I understand, my belief in training? Okay? And sometimes some stuff comes out. So can you look at something and go, hmm, I like that because, I can use that because. Can you also go off to it and give it a bit of a <coughs> What's that smell like? And does it look like shit? It's probably shit. Okay? Can you work that out? It's pretty simple. 
It's pretty simple to work that out, guys. It's not hard. You're smart enough to do that. A lot of people, though, don't do that. It's not hard to look at something. It smells like shit. It looks like shit. It's probably shit. It's simple. Straight down the line. That is, that is no good. I don't like it. But you see somebody else do it. You don't put your own thought process in it. You, you're not good at learning. So all of a sudden, you start following them, and you don't even actually put that into practice. Don't underestimate that. Think for yourselves. Okay? Just because someone else doesn't do it, it does, does do it, doesn't mean it's right. Can you adapt? Why are people going to ask you to train them? Now, action, 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 action. All of this planning, you know, it's all great. But like I said, last week, uh, the week before um, I, I was off for a week, uh, but that week before I made a simple step. Dion, you're not going to talk about it, you're not going to train, you're just going to do it. Just do it. Action was the number one thing. I didn't have to plan it, I just saw an opportunity. Yep, that girl is my help. This guy I'm going to speak to. This guy I'm going to keep. Action, 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 action. I'll do this, I'll plan this. Great. Sometimes you're just going to go with flow and adapt. And adapt. The attitude was this week, I'm going to see how many clients I can, I can get. I need that for me to just know what's going on. And it worked. Why? Because of that. Yeah. Do stuff. Make it happen. Get into it. Nike's motto is. How good is that? If you want a self-help book, good, one page. Just do it. The end. How often are you in the gym learning, trying and molding? So who gets together and learns in the gym or just follows the plan? Who does that? Guys, do it more often. Mold. No, that doesn't feel right. Let's try that. I don't like that for you. Go over here and give that a go. That looks a bit better. Yeah, try that. How's that feel? Who's tinkering with himself? Yeah? I think you guys do. I think you do. Okay? But don't underestimate that. Start moulding what's right. Start tinkering. I love the term tinkering. I tinker all the time with my clients. They don't know it. Okay? Because that didn't look right. This does. I change a grip from a barbell or a front squat to an offset to a contra side to the same side with a bend. And so, yep, yeah, that's the one. That's what we're going to do. That's good for you. I like that. That's got rid of this. Cool. We're going to try that. Not. All its barbell split squats, I'll follow that. That's a good exercise. It's not a good exercise for you yet. Let me find the best fit by changing hand position, changing load, using a cable, standing 90 degrees with the weight of the cable rather than forward with an arm reach. What's going to get you doing that pattern better? Tinkering. How often are you doing that in the gym learning? This is a good exercise, but change it, okay? One thing I'd like to see you guys just do that next time. Yeah, you know what? We're going to make it better. It's good. But I want to find a way to make it better. That split squat's good, but that made it better. Well done. Good. They're doing this thing, so I'm going to get you doing this to get that internal rotation because you're not getting that. Excellent. I'll offset it with a weight at the same time. I'll use a cable in front of me at the same time to pull you around to get that rotation where you're lacking because the hips are dropping, so I need that reach. Okay? Does that make sense? We're going to do that today. Started, she was skinny, I guess I was trying to take a push-up and I adjusted her into the position because she was in a better place. Yeah, and she, she, had, she had a PT before and she said, like, oh, I have pain, and I'm just sort of like, and it's like, how did you have pain to do the push-up and you did the PT and she was like, yeah, it was push and I was like, good. It just didn't make sense to me. So no, no, and that's right, it, it shouldn't. Pain, hmm, why? So I just, just, so just adjusted when she get pain. Yeah, how often do you get someone saying similar to that, that, that they're getting pain? You can see that the pain, you can see why. Oh, I didn't like that. Yeah, good, because you drop first. Let me try it again. So they're in, straight away their mind goes to this exercise gives me pain. I don't want to do it, so it keeps me safe. To learn skill, it keeps us safe in life. It's programmed in our brain. So, we need to say, okay, and I said you've got pain, but what actually happened was, give them the facts first, always facts first, put their mind at ease. Okay, perhaps what happened there was, you did this, this, and this, what I want you to do is this, this, and this. This will enable us to do that exercise again. If we still get pain, I'm going to work it out and adjust that. But just because we've done it once does not mean it's not the right exercise for you, it's that we did it once wrong. Let's see if we can fix that a little Okay, don't just go and move away, look at it, mm. unless it was just, no, we're talking to like a, a one out of three. So functional movement screening uses zero, one, two, and three. Three is really good. Zero can't complete. One terrible. Two okay to average. 
Okay, so if you're getting a zero, if it's a zero, you can't do it. One, you work on it. Two, you improve it. Three, you work on it. That's great. If you're getting twos and threes, excellent. So trying and molding. So what courses have you funded yourself for lately? Has anyone done anything online? Has anyone went out and bought a new book? What are we reading? Ask before. I went to the Melbourne and did a three day internship with the kids over there. Yeah, great. Right. So Troy's done all sorts. How much training have you done in the last five weeks, mate? Five weeks? Five weeks for the full thing with the business summit and three day internship with Melbourne. They trained us twice the first day, twice the second day, three times. Oh, so full training, good, good, practical application. You will love that, mate. And you also did the, the course I sent to all of you guys, um, Rotation 9, yeah. the core, core trainer. Yeah. Human resource. Cool, suspension training. Cool, training. I did it in the boot and everything. Sorry? I said I did it in the boot. Good on you, mate. Awesome, guys. So these guys are right up to date right now. Now, Right now, when we learn stuff, so the stuff that Troy need to consider, and whenever you guys learn this, you are where you are mentally. Right now, the stuff I want to prepare, if I was to do this 12 months ago, it would be different to today. Why? Because my knowledge, maybe, maybe, and often, do you know how many times I come back and go, why am I doing that exercise? I used to do it all the time. Where did, that, where did I stop doing that? How did that happen? And I come back to it. You are where you are. When you walk down the road and you see things, today I see them a certain way. Okay? Next week, after having certain conversations, different things in life happen to me, I see them a different way. So these guys, I'll tell you right now, are going to have a lot of their influence the last month in their training, the attitudes, the things people have told you. It's going to happen naturally. The key is to harness it. You guys are smart enough to do that. Don't be the Viper guy. <laughs> Don't be, yeah, spot on. I'm glad you heard that. Don't be the Viper guy. Okay? To harness it. You know what? I'm going to try that for this guy. I start thinking, yeah, I can give that to this guy. But no, no, he still needs to stay over here. Not that one size fits all. Make sure you harness that. Make sure, like I said today, this is strongly influenced by my oil. I said today, I'm, I'm going to relook at 3.0 series. I'm going to relook at 4.0 series. So I did that. I spent a weekend. So when you, you know, uh, the 5th, the end of Mar uh, March, Whatever that weekend was, I basically spent the weekend at home with a little fella in and out, and I was just watching DVDs all day long. I enjoyed it. That was my weekend. It was a weekend off, but I was studying the whole weekend on that. I, I started with I watch one, I ended up watching seven, 15 hours of DVDs. I was fast forwarding, I was looking, I was doing this, his second series. I went through and did it. That was my weekend. I'm not going to tell you to do that all the time, but when you enjoy it, when you want to do it, cool. You know, do that. Make sure you're putting that in. I'm not, that's an extreme. What these guys have done is an extreme, you know, that, that's more so because they've just gone flat out and done a week's worth of training in four weeks basically, you know. Um, and then you want to obviously put that together. So it's going to be influenced by that because that was strength and conditioning. That's what we asked for back in February this year at the end of the first training day. Okay, but I don't forget all the other stuff that we do. It's just, okay, how can we use this? When you guys go to the course, how can I use this with what we do? It's as easy as that, okay? And it's really good when you come across people that believe similar to what you do and you can see how they adapt it. But it's equally as good when you watch other people and if you've got the skill set to watch someone else and think, I don't like that, I don't like anything about it, I don't know what it is, but I want to learn about it. Because he's opposite to what I say. Completely opposite. This guy had trained completely different to me. That was the last couple of years, the Michelle Dowcourts and Chuck Wolfs last year. Completely different style of training, but how can I use that? No, I don't do it like that, but how can I use that? Alright? But stick to your ethos and what you believe in. Do you love to learn? You guys are here, I think that speaks for itself. Every time someone comes with an issue, there's a chance to learn. Will's doing that. This educates you, this is experience. Get really good at learning, guys. Read different books at the moment. I'm rereading uh, Guerrilla Marketing in 30 Days, so I've started to reread that. I've just finished. Um, uh, uh, the Multiplier, which took me quite a long time because I sometimes was reading three or four books at a time, depending on what I want to read on the day. Um, the, the Multiplier, um, the Multiplier Theory, which is a leadership book. And then I'm also reading a uh, really, really in depth, sort of one of the books that you've got a dictionary on, on the lumbar spine, which is quite cool. Just going and looking at the pelvic girdle, which is really cool, only because, again, one of my clients, I wanted to look at a little bit more into that area and for myself. But it's not something I can read from back then. You know, it's just a bit boring. So that's why I've got these other more stimulating books like the Gorilla Marketing one. 
What is our job? That's our job. That's us. We make people feel better. That's it. That's what PTs do. That's what strength coaches do. We make them feel better. Okay, twice and after doing that, well, it feels good. I'm stuck here. Okay? The guy that gets out of his sports car is convertible. What am I going to do with him that day? Squats. Let's go. Come on, get this. Rock and roll. Is he going to walk out feeling better? No. 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 That's a good day for Viper. That's a good day for ball. That's a good day for rolling. That's a good day for mobility. Forget the deadlifts. You can make up for that the next day and you'll be better for it. He's going to walk out going, yeah, that was good. I feel much better today. Thank you. Fair enough? Just because it's your plan, just because it's your program, doesn't mean it has to fit. It means you have to fit it around it. Okay? Having a plan is great. Proper preparation prevents the poor performance. And failing to plan is planning to fail. So in the PBT, we've got a plan. Of course we do. Day one, day two, day three. And by the way, guys, you should note that even though this week, for example, PBT is the same program as last week, the days have changed. So when you're looking at the program, the days change. So, for example, last week we are training day two, this week we're doing day three. If people aren't following that, if you guys aren't educating your clients on that, they're not going to get the same result. Because they're going to do a few things. They're going to be backing up massive lifts with another day of massive lifts, which should be two days apart. For example, if you're a hypertrophy guy, training legs and then backs, generally you know Have a day between those massive lifts, deadlifts and front squats. Give them a couple of days rest. They're going to be different. Change them up because of the hormone response. Okay? Two days on, one day off, one day on, one day off. Start again. That's the plan. They did three days this week. No, you should have told them not to. You should have told them how to work around it. Unless they're going your way. So just keep that in mind. Great workout, feel better. If you want to lose weight, that's all about nutrition. So what's your focus with your client? Is it getting them moving better? Is it getting them feeling better? Are they someone like us? You know, my program is to make sure I do this and more. Do I have any strong goals for fitness this year? Probably not, besides so, you know, training these guys for, for uh, martial arts and kickoffs and getting a group together, that's probably my fitness goal for the year, doing that and being able to do it with them. Where am I with that at the moment? Probably a five, because I haven't done any boxing for the last four weeks besides shadow, so look forward to doing some sparring and getting belted, which would be good. Um, but you know, that, that's, that's the plan. So that's enough for me. For some of the clients, I have big goals. A client of mine, Tash, the other day, she, she always exercised. She's just had a wedding. That was a massive program for her for her wedding. You know, she's exercised with me. I've, ex I've trained her older sister, her brother, and her sister for the last 10 years. Um, and uh, do, do I want to set massive goals for her? Not really. Okay, her goal was about a fitness test to maintain this, to move forward a little bit. If something comes up, we'll work towards it. But right now, this year, I want to grow this. Still make it a positive goal, but we don't want to go backwards. Okay, I want to move better. I want to change this up. Okay. Where others have larger goals. They don't always have to be big. Make clients feel better and notice the way that they walk in. Like I said, look at the way they walk in and then look at the way they walk out. Your job is to make an improvement in that 30 minutes. However, not just from following the program. Ooh, you know, you had that nice week last night. Today squat day. You better do it. No, you better not do it. Get them feeling good so they walk out and say, okay, cool, tomorrow I'll squat. Fair enough? That's called psychokinetic periodization. Louis Simmons talks about that. If you'd like to look up Westside Barbell, and if you get onto YouTube and you look up periodization, not Westside periodization, cyberkinetic periodization. What's the terminology I'm looking for? Cyberkinetic periodization. Louis Simmons, oh, it's going to come to me, sorry guys. He's got a great article about making you faster in seven days. So strength coaches and the Russian way of strength and conditioning is simply this. I've got to make you fitter, stronger, faster and leaner in, oh, you're going to fight in 10 days. So we're going to start with phase two and then we go to phase three and we go to phase four. It's not going to happen in 10 days. So I'm going to go phase two, one day, bang, straight into phase five. I'm going to go phase six, going to go on conditioning day, bang into phase seven, two, three days rest. Conditioning, you're going to be faster, stronger, fit, and jump high in seven days. I can assure you. Could you do that? Could you work that out now? Because if you follow our program, week one, phase two, week three, week phase three, it will not work. Could you put all those phases together and manipulate them in a week for one mesocycle that makes you more stronger, faster, and fitter? 
Yes, she could. Definitely. Of course she can. That's what we're doing in programs in the PBT at the moment. The advanced push the fat program has them doing strength day. The next day they do the same base movements for conditioning. Like a circuit, I said fast as you can go. Okay, do the same movements because they're already acquired from the day before doing the strength lifting, so that neurological factor. The next day, same movements, up the reps, down the road, and go for it. Okay? So we can do this. Good coaches do what? I just threw this in here. Yeah. I, uh, I, I would like to see you guys try this. I learned I this from Mike Boyle, and I thought, you know what, we do that, but I thought it, it's got its place. John Wooden, who I've heard of before, um, John Wooden, maybe one of the best college basketball coaches uh, of all time, he was a, um, he, did, he won 12, um, what do they call them, the coaching the majors, basketball majors, university majors, I forget the term in America, in, in the 60s and 70s with, with his team, he was an all-American basketballer, anyway, real down, down the line sort of guy. Sharp shooter, he died a couple of years ago. I think he was born in the 20s or something like that. Um, sharp shooter, straight down the line, real simple. This is what I want you to do. Okay, this is the exercise. Can you jump up for me, mate? Yeah. Nick, let's see your squat. What I want you to do is drop your hips back, okay, and tip your hips back, drive through your heels. Good. Chest up, keep going. Yeah, yeah keep going. That's it, keep going. Good. All right, good. All right, stop there, mate. What I want you to do is this. Tip your bottom back, keep your chest up. What I don't want you to do is to round your shoulders, all right? But what I want you to do is drive your chest up. Can you give that a go for me? Drive your chest up, good. Let's get your chin in for me. Here we go. That's it, stop. So I don't want you to do this, mate. I want you to lift your chest up, uh -huh. lift your chest up, and drive your hips up and under. That's what I want you to do. Can you feel that? Good, take a seat. Simple. What did I do? What was my technique? What did I keep doing? Positive, negative, positive. Positive, negative, positive. Positive, negative, positive. It's direct, it's sharp, it's the same way you give feedback, the corporate feedback sandwich approach. Positive, negative, positive, same thing. Okay? Cool? It's a great skill to have. I apply that as often as I can, and I think that's great. I've heard that before, you know, that's really cool. I don't know if you guys know that or if we've stated that before, but I think it's just really simple. Mike Law said that uh, in 2011 when he did this, he just said to all of his coaches, whatever you're doing, stop it, I want you to do this. Okay, whatever you're doing, if you're doing it for good, but it's going to be looking like this. If I hear coach, I want to hear positive, negative, positive. That's it. They said they make their program shorter, sharper, they've got more people doing what they wanted sooner, people are more efficient, and the team tends to, to respond better to it. Just by saying, you know what, that makes sense, let's just do that. Good for me. So guys, give it a shot. Just think about it. Positive, negative, positive. Yeah. If you listen to like, especially obviously watching a lot of fights, the cornermen in between fights, the best coaches, like uh, notably like Greg Jackson who cornered St. Pierre and John Jones, he always says, you know, you're doing beautiful with your jab. What I want you to do is look, you know, to, to back off when he's coming forward. You're not backing off, that's not working. And then I want you to do this, which you're doing fantastic. Positive, it's always positive, positive, negative, positive. And it's always, you know, like, the, positive, the way he talks the positive, he talks very um, excited. When he talks the negative, it's just straight down the line. This is what we fix, and then it's very excited again for the positive. Great that you pick that up, mate. And because you're interested in that, I'm sure you would say that's something that you do. Same thing. Okay? Good. I constantly remind myself that when I'm in PT, okay, I'm pretty good at it. When I'm in a setting, uh, just personally, if I was doing my own evaluation, same with you guys, I'm pretty good at it. Okay? Think about that. When I'm in a meeting with people, yeah, great. No worries. When I'm training with people or in group training, I suck at that. Because it's not my natural thing to do. It's just to tell you. That's my D coming out. So I'm constantly aware when I train with guys like when we're doing boxing and I'm watching people, I often just shout out, hey, get your arms up, do this. So that's something I need to work on. Fair enough? So it's about how do you use that more often? How can I do that at home with my wife? How can I do that with my family in certain times? When you do that naturally, then you just do it naturally. Fair enough. It's not something just to do with training. Think about at home. Think about how you can utilize that. Fair enough. To, to, to get what, not manipulating, but get what you want, get your point across. Fair enough. There's nothing wrong with that. Good. Thanks for sharing that, mate. Okay, so a typical programming style, a typical style of programming for 
um, uh, conditioning and certainly Olympic lifting as well as sports. They spend about an hour, an hour and a half in their conditioning workouts. So if uh, if you're looking at training, for example, with um, the pros and the footy teams and so forth like that, they spend about an hour, three, five, two hours in the gym and they go through something that looks like this. You think that's a lot of time in the gym? Of course it is, but it's only up here for so, so much of that. The proper supplementation, a lot of recovery, of course, these guys have got the time to be able to do it. So they start with 20 minutes of warm up. We're going to go through some of the warm up. They'll go through 20 minutes of speed, plyometric activity, make you faster, make you quicker. Put that in at the beginning of the session because it's all about power and speed development. We prioritise that first. 20 minutes then of more speed and power, or big Olympic lifting. We'll talk a little bit about Olympic lifting. Then they'll go in you know, 20 30 minutes of specific strength work, depending on the person. Again, these can variables might be manipulated for the 18 year old versus the other, who needs more, and so on. Okay, and think about this for your clients. And then finishing off with conditioning at the end. Okay, so we put the conditioning, the cardio work at the end. We don't make plyo or Olympic lifting our cardio work based on the demand of the nervous system, of course, of the joints, tendons, and ligaments to perform those exercises, as well as fatigue setting in when you're doing large movements. If you're performing those large jumping, burping, big lifting exercises, cardio guys, stop it. You can only do them until technique goes. So for most people, if I was to do a burpee in 30 seconds, I'm done. I'll get about 20 done in 30 seconds, I'll fly through them and then gone. Okay, that's it. That's power, good. Now go off and back it off for a less demanding exercise. Same sort of thing if you think through there. So program design is all about progression and regression. We're familiar with that. We've talked about that and we've got some terminology within the push group, which is you've got to earn the right to progress and never be afraid to regress. It's all about progression and regression. What can we do as a group? It makes it a bit tougher. In a group setting of four or five guys, I need you doing this, I need you doing that. It's always easiest if you can all have people doing the same thing, but facility-wise, materials, you're not going to be able to do that. If you've got kettlebells, you can. They're a great tool because you get four people lining up with a kettlebell doing a sumo deadlift, for example. You say, I want you to try it here, I want you to do this. You can get people doing push-ups and all those patterning as a group. That's easy. Okay? Once you know that they can move correctly, that's when perhaps you get your breaking off and doing different stations. When you know they've got those right movements and you've given them specific details as a group. How do we decide what's appropriate for who? Simple. Rule one, do not harm. Rule two, the tortoise beat the hare. Always start with less, because less is more. Often guys will come to the gym and they want to start squatting. They want to start doing bench press. Okay? The tortoise beat the hare. Let's work your way up to doing that exercise correctly. The first six to eight, eight weeks is generally all pattern work. Okay? My beginning program with all of my clients is not a phase one workout. I'll tell you that right now. It's all phase two. And I've said that from you before. Phase one is for them to do on their own. You might show them. My training is completely different to that. Because some of them might not be able to do that. I saw a lady in training with one of our clients, uh, staff the other day, that could not do a sumo deadlift. That's not going to be inappropriate. So how do you get someone to perform that bending pattern if they're unable to do that? That's going to be their program. It might take them a week or two just to learn that, which is what I spent with that guy the other day, and it got a positive result. So learning, just because it's the program, which is nice, we want them to do that pattern. If they can't do it, where do you go from a sumo deadlift? How do you go back? What do we teach? How do we go back? You know, there are several exercises that might not work. We're going to tinker and find, aha, that's good for you. But yeah, a bow would be a good example. Bridging, great examples. We might have to look at inhibition. We might have to do a lot more rolling. Okay? Cool. We might just have to get them doing some rolling on the floor and work on pelvic tilting because they don't know how to do this. She was locked in this position. She had a flat back. She was doing this sort of thing. Okay, how do we teach that? So a bow's not going to work with tight glutes because they will bow through their back. Cool. So we've got to focus on this first. Okay? So how do we get that happening? Cool. Programming. Understand patterns. Understand patterns. Now, this is your traditional Tudor bumper, Charles Bollockwood, and the name that doesn't come to me, you actually created it. Okay? Strength work. This is what every workout should look like. Do you have one of these in each of your sessions? 
So who, who's heard what you've heard from TAFE and probably within the last 10 years? Push, pull, legs. Look, if you're doing push, if you're doing pull, if you're doing legs, and if you're doing some form of rotary stability, okay, which it means, uh, I'll explain a little bit more about that after you guys are probably doing this, but if you're, the term rotary stability means resisting axial loading against the ax your, your lower body transverse plane axis. So what that means is in this position that you're not getting any movement. Keep yourself in a neutral position. Okay, so resisting movement away from um, your axial space. So if I lift my elbow, what do I want to do? Drop. There's no resistance. I need to hold into this position. So resisting that movement. So your warding exercises are terrific. Okay? That is where I stability. Cool? If you're doing that sort of thing, if you've got those sorts of movements, if you've got the side planks with a rotation, okay? If you're doing those sorts of things in your program and on top of this, then you're probably doing a pretty good program anyway. Okay? But to make it better, we want to make sure, have you got a knee dominant exercise? Okay? Have you got a hip dominant exercise? Have you got a vertical pull? Vertical push, again? Maybe. Already went around? Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Already did that. So, if it's a vertical push, might take that out and add in an extra pull for most people. Fair enough? Might be a big loading, so a big kettlebell fly, something to open up through their chest. Might mix that up, depending on the point. Okay? Horizontal push, horizontal pull, rotary stability diagonal. Have you got that in your program? So is it that? Is that what you follow as functional programming? Or is it anterior oblique, posterior oblique, lateral sling, posterior longitudinal? Or is it primal movement patterns? Or is it hypertrophy loading, load resistance, gravity, momentum? Or is it multi-planar? It should be the law. That's functional. For somebody just to say, it's just primal movement patterns. It's just multi-planar. It's got to be this. This encompasses your entire body. So if we go back one and think primal movement patterns, well, that's primal movement patterns. Paul, this is what Charles Pollock would say. Paul Check would say, push, pull, push, pull, squat, bunch, gate, bend. What's that even? Yeah. We can't end this. Cool? Which is very similar, different terminology. Okay? In different planes of motion. So that's what we want to make sure we're doing in that program. Is there any questions about that? That is a functional training program. Cool? Strength and conditioning, well, it's all this. This is the terminology you use. Have you got that in your program? So your ability to demonstrate is paramount to your success. So I can't say how important that is. You've got to look apart, you've got to understand it, you've got to be able to demonstrate it. Your ability to demonstrate is paramount to your success. If something is important, you should be doing it every day. So if something is important, you should be doing it every day. With your clients, if something's important, do it every day. They're in this position, I need you to do this every day. I need you to roll out T-spine. I need you to roll out peak mine. I need you to do that more often. Okay? You're used to being in this position. Okay? So you're rounding those shoulders. I need you to get roll these out. I need you to rub and roll through here. You stretch those traps because you probably find that's better. I need a massage once a week. Okay? I need you to roll peg mine up against the wall, get the ball in there and roll it through. Okay? And I need you to learn to elevate, retract, depress, and set your shoulders. So I want you to be doing this exercise on the hour, every hour for five seconds, I don't care, all day long. Okay? Whatever exercise you've got in your repertoire of movements that you can do. Push the elbows in, for example. Open up the fingers, elevate the chest, hold a dumbbell, do external rotation. Can you do that? Can you do wall slides? I need you to do these exercises every day on the hour, every day. That's what you're doing. Okay? If it's important, that's what I do. Fair enough? So I might do the seated row exercise one day, the next day I might be performing this exercise as a warm-up. Cool. I might be doing loaded strength single leg deadlifts for this guy. Okay. Right. I might be doing the loaded single leg deadlifts day one. Next day I might be doing with the ball with the reach. Okay. So are you doing these things in your movement training with your clients in their warm-ups? Workouts become warm-ups. Warm-ups become workouts. 
mixing those movement patterns up. Cool, so we might be doing loaded weighted push-ups one day, or on football, weighted push-ups using the vest or a plate across your back. Okay, I used the vest last night, by the way, for push-ups, that was excellent, great. And for, uh, using the vest, if you've got one, we, I didn't realize we were looking for one, and Anthony said, oh, there, we've got one in the, in the, in the lockers, which was great, so beautiful, that came out last night. Very hard to load up exercises like a single-legged squat with hands, vests are awesome, or using clips around the cable, wrapping it around your hips, you need a certain vest for that, that's what I was looking for, but that was great because you can't really load that weight up the stability portion to be able to do a full single legged pistol squat or great. So using those sorts of tools, so warm up to become workouts and vice versa. And you know what the favourite exercises are? Ones that are hard to screw up. Pretty simple. So let's talk about that for a moment. We'll have a break in a minute because this is um, this is going to be the end of the lecture part for I think today, we're going to be moving for the rest of it. Um, exercises that are hard to screw up, definitely going to be the favourites. If you're screwing them up and you think this is a great exercise, and I learnt it, that might well be, but that might be phase four of your progression. Okay? That might be right down the track. I spoke to you guys a little while ago about the chin up progressions, for example. Okay? Do you have a repertoire of exercise? I don't think, judging on time, we're not going to be able to do this today. So we'll do this next time, and when I come and visit you guys um, at Mount Gambia, do you have a repertoire of exercises for your favourites? So let's talk about what are some of our favourite exercises for weight training. What are push favourites? Come on, give them a give them up. Jump squat. Box squat, split squat, split squat chin ups, so vertical pulls, big chin ups, big exercises. Row, seated row. Yeah, a seated row is a beautiful exercise, anti flexion exercise. Okay, so it's a beautiful partner to a push-up, anti-extension exercise, perfect. If you do a seated row shit out, it looks like this. Okay? If you do a push-up, shit out, it looks like that. So they're beautiful partners. Okay, warding off against my gravity and so forth. Great functional program. Okay? Trust me, if you're doing these workouts and other personal trainers, if the, uh, another personal trainer comes in and looks at what you're doing and you're saying you're doing this and doing that, that'd be very, very impressed. There's no doubt about that. Okay? Um, yeah, so these are some of our favourite exercises. Okay, sorts of progression. So let's just take, let's just do one of these as an exercise. Let's take the split squat, yeah? Can someone say split squat? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Split squat, cool. So, where do we start? Where do we go? Progress this. Where do we start? Where do we go? How do we move? Where do we go? Cool, I like this. Right. Yes. yes. Let's put them all down. They don't have to be in the right order. We'll just throw them all down. Don't think what comes next because that does your head in. Just throw them all out and then we can go right. That, is that one, two, that's so on the floor, so both legs on the floor. That's, so that is a split squat. We'll leave that. So that's up there. Split squat. Spot on. We'll go BSS. Good girl. We'll go Polish. Okay. Uh, interesting, Mike Ball hates using those terms in his DVDs. He talks about do not call them that because who are they to say that they're the ones that come up with it? <laughs> Which is good. And that's fair enough. I think maybe that's the American, Russian. That was the Polish split squat different from the Bulgarian. Good. So basically, this is not a Bulgarian split squat, should be called this. This is a rear RFES. Rear foot elevator squat. Okay? This is an RFSS. So this is the way I would see it. This is the split squat position, it's a lot of load through your back leg. And with people that lack dorsiflexion, what happens is they load up and they don't find that they're comfortable in that position. So they're here. Okay? They stay here. So they cannot get their weight on their front leg. Which is why the single leg balance is really good. As well as Single balance. Uh, well, I was going to say part of press, but we'll do that for today. Okay, teaching people to do this. Keep their weight onto one leg. They need to know where their weight is. You don't do this in body part. You go straight. Yep, yeah, split your legs. Away you go. You don't learn where you should be. You can stand on one leg and keep that position. If I've got weight here, I've got weight on my back leg. That's going to take my weight away from my centre point. I'm now 
using my back leg. Okay? That's going to throw your lunge out and make it very hard to teach. So I say your split squat, make it very hard to teach. So chest up, holding that position. The reason that this is a tough exercise to do is most people will have too much weight on their back leg. So what happens? Hamstring therefore becomes short, rolls through the ischium, okay? Knee comes over toe, ankle lifts, because nine times out of 10, people lack dorsiflexion, can't keep their heel down and open up their glute. Glute on, glute off. On, off. So we want to teach this movement, okay? We want to make sure we're not at end range, not at end range, we're somewhere in the beginning, or in the middle. And we load it up, feeling that quad working, and can stand nice and tall. Okay? So this is a split squat. Most people, because they lack that, okay, need to use the Polish technique. And this was just a, a sports scientist in Poland who came up with, I don't like the movement that this encourages for people learning, so we'll give you back leg up onto our step, which now means you have to be up onto your toe. Okay, with not much load. So it is an easier technique for you to drop through the hip with less load because you're not encouraging that. Okay, I love that before that. So for me, and I think you'll probably agree, that comes before a split squat. Teaching that technique, back leg elevator. That gets your weight on your front leg, so you're now sending that signal. It's more of a neurological demand on the front leg rather than this weight on both of my feet. No weight on your back leg, which is a single squat. Remember, a single squat is a single squat. If I'm teaching somebody, it's this. Squat for me. Now don't move your body, bring your back leg back. That's all I want you to do. I want you to do the exact same thing, just on one leg. Nothing changes. Cool, so you can mix that up. That works really well. It's a good little cue to teach your clients. Squat down, hold that position. Stand up, squat down, hold that position. Okay, just teaching them, this is the action, it makes no difference. It's a good little technique, guys, to use that. Try giving that a shot. Just getting them on, okay, so it's the same thing. Yeah, it is. Front squats and deadlifts, same thing. Yeah, it is. This is not a deadlift. It is a step straight leg deadlift, or your specific deadlift. The remaining, remaining deadlift is a squat. No different. Cool? Same thing. So change your hands. Okay, next one. Teach people. Just gets it in there. This is the same. Yeah, just gets it in. Why have you explained it? Yeah, good. Good. Yeah, come on. So those single part off presses teaches people keep your own in the front leg. You know, that's a good technique. And what I'm saying that now, hold your cable to 90 degree. Or in this position, 90 degree. To avoid that valgus knee. Could be the same thing. Wrapping away. If that's not working, if I'm getting this action happening, so I'm aeroplaning. Could be the same thing, like a band around it. We got bands here, guys. Where's the bands? No bands. Okay. Same thing. Band around my knees. And what's going to happen is this. In this case, well, I don't have a band, so good. Improvise. Push against me. So push against me twice. Good. Just gently hold that position. Keep pushing. Good. There we go. All of a sudden, glute me really kicks into place. So if I don't have a band, last night who was it? Twice. Jumped onto the trainer. When I wanted to jump onto the the cable trainer, so I had to improvise, so I started doing this instead. Okay? Started warding. The whole idea is warding, getting that weight, get glute beat activated. Just different techniques. So could you do that? Yep, we're going to go over and we're going to do a rotation press on band. Toss there. Oh, Will's got the yellow band. What am I going to do? Still doing that pattern? Okay, we're going to do it this way. There's many ways to do that. So open up. Your repertoire, get more and more going. What else are we going to do? Pull it, rear foot elevator, pull it, single balance, single leg. What else? Are we including uh, grips? Grips, oh. instant stability loss, so if you like, make them into a free form. Is that what Back, oh, beautiful. Excellent. Yeah, good one, mate. Excellent. So, free form is a great way to do a single leg squat, but that is now a lunge. So, that's our lunging technique. That now is going to come down the track. Because I lunge, if you want to hurt people, simply do lunges. Okay? So if you want to make someone really sore, do lunges. They suck. They're hard. They're tough. If you like the feeling of being sore, then teach people to do lunges. This is how you do it. They hurt. Okay? Split squats. My butt's still hurting from the other day. They hurt. 
Okay? So using a free form, good one. Um, Mike uses things called bow slides. I think they're a great tool. That's something I'd like to start using. I haven't used them before. They're just like a little, um, what was it, Reebok slide? You know, the slide yeah. tool? Basically, they're a little one of those. So you can put it under your foot and just slide it. Beautiful for this sort of thing. You can put your knee on there for hip flexions. Really nice and easy. You can get on the ground, use the bow slide and just slide it. Do this sort of stuff, which you can do anyway. I can't see them being expensive, so I'm going to grab a few for the club. Yeah, a lot of them in the gym, YouTube, the horse, the gym, yeah, probably do that. Heaps of them, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, they're great little tool to teach people no weight. Because yeah. you, you, you'll still hope. So great, that's where we use the free form. It's the same sort of thing, just a lot more expensive. They're about 250 bucks. I can't imagine how many, much more than 20 or 30 bucks. So free form, yep. Good, then of course we've got. Say that, say again. Yeah, all right, so we'll go, let's go up here. We're going to go back, front. Talk about loading then. We'll go contra, say again, mate. Yeah, yeah I was going to say that, contra and ipsy. Yep, go ipsy. Ipsy means same side in Latin, guys, ipsy lateral. Okay, so ipsy lateral presses compared to contra lateral, which is much tougher because you've got that rotary stability component, which is now higher, yeah? Okay, so we've got to resist that. If you've got somebody doing this sort of thing, okay, what can you do to offset that? Put a dumbbell in the hand. Okay, do a push pull on the cables on the trainer. Mix it up. Okay, so push pull drivers. So one comes through, one comes back. You haven't seen that? I'll show you that if you want. Yeah. Cool. Uh, okay, contra, ipsy, offset, other side, front, kettlebell, overhead. And this will go. Say again. Sorry. At uh, a deadlift position, which we really like. Is a deadlift a tougher exercise than a squat? Hell yes, it is. There is a lot more muscle activation on deadlift because why? We've got the entire upper body stabilizing around that shoulder girdle. We've got biceps, tendons, and ligaments through our shoulders holding that position done poorly. Crap. If you cannot hold, hold this position, it's a beautiful exercise, but for that point, hard to teach, you know? I probably could do it, well, I'll be able to do it with you, I'm sure you can do that, but there'll become a point where bang, your natural stance will kick in, that's all you stop. Do not train through that, because you're going to do eight reps this week, or you did ten last week. No. And this goes for training another person's client, by the way. Hmm, training Troy, Troy said, Stacey said last week, he did ten of ten kilo. I've got to fall off and just ran in the shoulder. No, no, I'm going to stop there. I want to speak to Stacey. Stacey, Stacey, how did you get that into you? What sort of technique was it? Do you know what I mean? Just bring that up, because obviously if you're doing this beautiful technique, okay, and all of a sudden it starts to... We start to get that little bit of movement through the spine. It's all about protecting the spine. So now, it's no longer a... What is this exercise? Yeah, so what am I, what am I training? What am I resisting? Anti-flexion. I've got to work my extensors. Anti-flexion. Now I'm no longer anti-flexing, I am flexing. Exercise is finished. Done. You're now not performing that correctly. You've now changed the system in which to perform that exercise. You change the system, you stop. You always avoid changing the system. Change the loading, but not the system. Fair enough? You regress that, you stop it, you back it off. Which is what we did yesterday. <coughs> Okay, you put the weight on, I've got to fight, that's enough mate, back the weight off and go for eight, there's no way, I'm going to have to start cheating, I don't need to. Cool. Cool, so yeah, look, I'm going to keep going on this. Free form, split squat, single legged balance, what else do we need to do? We can do this, it's always better to see it. Here, ipsy, offset or unco, okay, contra, offset or unco, okay, tougher again, good, we can go barbell. Okay, beautiful for thoracic spine, great exercise. Okay, no different, just harder. Okay, are we able to do overhead extensions for T-spine? Beautiful, can we do it? We're going to push away. What's tougher? Okay, so can we do a little push away press? Doing the lunge, cables there, push away. Can I whack away around the band, around my knee, for that person, that's aeroplane? Okay, can I do it with a reach? 
reaching across my body, there's many ways to, to load that. Can I do it now? Of course, into a lunge position, so the next step is we're going to go for lunging. Good. We're going to go single squat. Progressions from here are definitely single squats. Single squats are much harder again. Okay? So if you're able to do this, you've pretty much got everything you need in the gym. If you can do what I just did then, great. Cool? Now look at the difference. Left side, I'm very happy with. Right side. Okay, why? Left side, beautiful. This is the mecca. Ankle mobility, hip mobility, T-spine mobility. Awesome exercise. Okay, it's the mecca. If you can do all of that, you've obviously got good core stabilization because your hips are neutral. Beautiful exercise. So how do you load that? How do you keep going? Put the best on. We use hand weights. Hand weights are great. Okay, can you do that? Can you, can you load that hand weights with the cables and so forth? So if you can get your clothes doing that, you've done very well. In the gym, if you can do that with load, you've done very well. If you can do split squats with load, more than what you can squat with one leg, two legs, you've done very well. Okay, so I can do, what did I do recently? 145, you know, I did 80 for five. Okay, so that's 160 for five. Excellent. Where's the first place that you fail with with a squat? What fails? Uh, who thinks back or be uh, Where do you fail? You're right, mate. You're back. Your back is what fails. No one complains about their legs not getting right on the squat. What's the first thing that happens? Is it this? Now it's this. Has anyone ever seen them do this and their legs give way? No, it's up, down. Okay? You cannot, you will not, but on a split squat. Perfect example. Back squat, front splits. What's going to go? Okay? It is a much tougher exercise. Much harder exercise. So, for the bodybuilders out there, the big lifting guys out there, squats are lovely, they've got a bigger hormonal effect. Well, let's think about that. Let's think about that for a minute. Bigger weight, high testosterone release, three sets compared to six sets. Okay? 80 kilo, so if I was to do 70, I'll get 12 reps out, 13 reps out. If I went as many as I could, 70 kilo, Full depth, I can only do five, I would more likely double that, triple that. If I went for one set and rep, as many reps as possible, I'd get 15 reps on one leg, I would die. Okay? But I could do that once. Doesn't matter how hard, I would maybe get one more rep of 140. Does that make sense? You got that? No? So the leg squat, I might get one more rep. Yeah. I only get 10. Okay? So for legs, for hypertrophy, a much better exercise is a single legged squat. The other thing is this. When, think about this, when do you squat and what is our body designed to do? Is our body designed to squat? Yeah, it is. But when do you squat during the day? You deadlift. Okay. Quite a okay. That's about the only time you squat during the day. So you think about what's functional. And you sit down, you think about what's functional. Our body is designed to work unilaterally, not bilaterally, not together. Our body is designed to do this because we're not fused together, legs don't move together, we are designed to work unilaterally. Does that make sense? Okay, one side at a time. So when you think about functional adaptation, a single leg squat is the way the body is designed to move. It's the way that we are supposed to work. Squats are not. All of that load, if I was to ask you, could I give you one exercise that is going to make you stronger, get you leaner, and it's only 50% of the energy of what squat would be, but you get better results. Yeah, cool, no worries. That's a split squat, it's a one-legged squat. So, okay. that's, that's it, my question is just training people from 
month at a time just doing like unilateral to split squats and, and all that stuff. And then they'll come back to do a two legged squat and they'll have not done months, but you know, twice or twice. Okay, so I disagree with that. I agree with disagree. I'll explain why. Having seen this and do this, it's the it's like, you know how you get a client who you want to tell them to do intervals, but they like running for 20 days? It's all up here. And don't, never underestimate. Psychology will always, always outweigh your physiology. Period. I can only do 140 for five. Put you guys into the gym with me. Right? Bang, competition. Let's go. You break records. Psychology will always be physiology. Never forget that. Okay? And you know, nothing to laugh about, but I think about that with your clients. You get someone on the plateau, put like two of you on the train together and watch them go. Wow, well done. Today was a big learning, big learning um, growth step for you both today. Okay? Because all of a sudden now they step it up a notch. They, the plateau of I can't do any more, but somebody else is doing it. Ooh. No, I've got to do a little bit more too. Competition is excellent. Healthy competition is excellent. Doesn't matter how you look at that. So the psychology factor of doing the two-leg squat is the same. But I went off on that. Oh, this is heavy. That's where you don't get it. 80 kilos across the back doesn't feel like 160. So this is the deal. You've got to understand. I've done 80 across my back. Okay. I, I can do 160 with two legs. I can. I can. You lift the weight up and you feel that heavy weight, oh, I'm saying, shit, I'm gonna do this. Put the weight back down, forget it, you're not ready. Fair enough? You're not ready. You haven't got the maturity, um, or, and that's what you need more advanced training mindset. Think about a beginner and intermediate and advanced. It's got nothing to do with time, it's got to do with this. Switching on. You switched off as soon as you lift that weight up. And you put it down. So the exercise you might be just lifting the weight up, week one and week two. Just lifting the weight up. West side barbell would be lift the weight up, do it, go back to where you were, give it a shot, even out. So West side barbell approaches these three week programs, okay, for three weeks at a time. Okay? What happens is in week one, they, they, their job is to max out every workout. Sound familiar? Reach a high point every workout. Same. How do we do that? Manipulate the variables and don't overtrain the pattern. What this means is you hit the bar with the squat bro. Last time I did 140 for five. That's my PB. So in the diary, you know how you've got PBs in the back of your diaries now? It's PB, you make sure you use that form. I can't say how important that is. I write more in that than what I write in my workouts because that's really what I'm following. What's your PB? 140 for five? Cool. Today, it's been six weeks since you squatted. 140 for five. If they turn and go, oh, no, 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 you know, they're not ready mentally. You've got to tell them, right, you've just done this. You've just been here. You've just done that. Okay? You know you can do this. All I want you to do today is go 140 for 5 and equal your PB. That's it. Today. I want you to prime up. So I'm going to start you at 100 for 2. 120. 120. I'm going to boost those sets up. I'm going to get you going. Okay? And then, from there, good. What I want you to do is I'm going to go to 140 for 5. So week 1 is just getting your head on lifting heavy weight again. Week 2, you smash it. So week 2, you come and smash it. Maybe you go again on week 3. Unless you're fatigued. So week 3, I'll go again. Yeah, I'll go again. After week 3, you've learned it, you've beaten it, and you've pushed yourself to beat it again. Time to move on. You're going to plateau the next week. You're going to be fresh. Okay? Nervous system wise, overcompensation, you're done. 3 weeks max. Does that sort of make sense when you think that process through? Think of a lot that you want. So when we come back, I'm going to beat it. Then I'm going to beat it, and then to beat it again, that's a high neurological demand. Your central nervous system is going, well, I'll beat this again. You're really increasing your intensity right up there. Okay? Then you back off and go back to the split squat. We go back 80 to 5. And then you end up going 85 to 5 in three weeks' time. Back to the, for example, every workout's a different win. So you change your squat to a front squat to a box squat, to a wide stance, to a narrow stance, to a single leg, to a front split, to an offset dumbbell split. Three, awesome exercises. Simply one, beautiful. Two, three, four, okay? Four, should I say. Favorites, absolute ripper exercises for strength. If you can do that stuff, good. I'm not gonna get this guy 
that guy, if you can do that, I'm not going to get you doing part of presses for load. That's not your strength workout. I'll never get you even doing that again. Does that make sense? I'll do that as your primers to get you up to that level. Once you can do this, and you can do that, you don't need to do that. When you do your power presses is your warm. That's when you're going to do this stuff. Okay? I'm not going to get you doing that and learning how to do the technique. Because you know how to do that pattern. Now I'm going to load it real properly with jumps, with step off the bench. Okay? So loading up okay, with a lunge, whatever that might be. Stepping it forward off the bench and driving back up. So using more load, much more load if you're going to step down into a lunge. 